What's up, Mitten Squad? My name is Paul, and welcome back to another Top 10 video. In this video, I'll be going over 10 things you didn't know about Batman Arkham City. Number 10. Setting the date of the console or PC that the game is running on back to December 13th, 2004, the day that the game's developer Rocksteady was founded, and talking to Calendar Man in the courthouse basement triggers a special dialogue from him where he claims that the end is near, and when it comes, he'll be there. This is likely a reference to the final game in the series, Batman Arkham Knight, which was in development at the time, as well as it being the final entry in the Arkham game series. This easter egg wasn't found by fans until three years after the game's release when Rocksteady hinted at its existence. Number 9. Throughout the city are a number of giant Cheshire cat heads. There is also a giant yellow duck in the basement of the steel mill. These items are likely a reference to Tim Burton's early Batman film, Batman Returns. Number 8. Rocksteady's marketing game manager, in an interview with The Guardian from September 2011, said that you start with all of Batman's gadgets previously unlocked in Arkham Asylum to convey a sense of urgency, like Batman had always been preparing for a day that would inevitably come. Number 7. Inside the Gotham City Police Department building is a list of recently arrested people. The names are Joshua Daudry, David Tyndall, David Hoggins, Shigar Patel, Noel Chamberlain, and Johnny Armstrong. All of these people are actually developers of Rocksteady Studios. Number 6. During Protocol 10, the player can find a patch of fire shaped like a musical note on one of the museum's exterior walls. It is unknown if this is a coincidence or a joke put in by the developers. Number 5. Wearing Batman's animated series skin during the main story will result in Catwoman and Robin appearing in their respective animated series skins as well. This also works for Harley Quinn's Revenge DLC should the player exit out of it, continue from the main menu and select the animated series outfit from there. Number 4. Early in the game, Batman must locate the source of a sniper shot. The Joker reveals that the church the gun is found in is filled with explosives, but the tower will not explode immediately if the timer hits zero. Instead, Joker will talk for a short period of time, hinting at a key plot point from later in the game. After his monologue, the Joker will warn the player that they really ought to get out of there. If they do not leave, the bombs will indeed explode, leading to a game over. Number 3. In the Park Road District, in an alley around the back of a Monarch Theater, the player can find a chalk outline in the shape of two dead bodies. This is the same place where Bruce Wayne's parents, Thomas and Martha Wayne, were killed by a mugger while the family were on their way home from the theater. This incident led to Bruce Wayne becoming Batman, as we all know. Around the outline, a bouquet of flowers and an interview tape from Hugo Strange can be found on one side with the tape consisting of a single message from Strange taunting Batman. On the other side of the outline is a single rose. A button prompt triggers when near the rose, allowing the player to pay their respect to the Wayans. Batman will kneel by the outline in silent contemplation. Staying in the position for a minute will earn the player the achievement or trophy for paying respect to the Wayans. Number 2. While using the cryptographic sequencer, a voice can be heard at three locations, each of which gives a different code through the numbers. The three decoded messages will read, I will return Batman. You will pay for what you've done to me, and fear will tear Gotham City to shreds. Number 1. According to an IGN interview with Arkham City director Sefton Hill from February 2011, Rocksteady had at one point considered adding multiplayer to the game, quote, There have been a number of rumors circulating about a multiplayer mode in Batman Arkham City, so let me start by saying once and for all that Batman Arkham City is a single player only experience. Our thought process behind this was fairly simple. When we investigated adding multiplayer, we asked if we use all this energy that's required to create multiplayer and instead focus this on the single player, would that deliver a better overall game? With the game now coming to its final stages, I can honestly say that it would not have been possible to deliver Arkham City the way we wanted to if we had added multiplayer into the game." End quote. Alright, that's gonna do it for this top 10 video about Batman Arkham City. If you enjoyed the video or learned anything, leave a like. Leave a dislike if you didn't enjoy the video or didn't learn anything. Leave a comment if you have any suggestions for any future top 10 videos about any game or game character. Follow me on Twitter at Mitten Squad. My name is Paul of Mitten Squad. Have a wonderful day.